It's day two of Survival Week here on the Weather Channel. Today we bring you tales of survival in the face of extreme weather. Hosting this morning's coverage live from Wild Iris, Wyoming is our Jim Cantori. And Jim, you mentioned Knowles, and a lot of our viewers are probably thinking, what in the world is that? It stands for National Outdoor Leadership School. And what exactly do they uh, teach you there? Is it all just survival or, or more stuff? Well, Steph, when you think about it, if you go on a, a week hike out in the wilderness with a guide, you certainly want that guide to be uh, very knowledgeable about what's going on. You want him to be able to recognize signs of people that aren't doing well out there, hypothermia, uh, altitude sickness, things like that. So these guys teach you uh, exactly what that's all about. And Jamie's going to talk about hypothermia, and which is a you know, probably one of the biggest things that you have to concern yourself with out there, right, Jamie? Yeah, certainly when it's cold, Jim. And uh, typically hypothermia um, is problematic as a result of a, a series of um, small but poor decisions. and things A series sort of, of small decisions, that's interesting. Yeah, they sort this of is, add up. Let's do two situations here. We've got Pearson in the, in the sleeping bag. We'll do what is more like a week hike and also a day hike yeah. if we can. So in the event that someone does get cold, they start to, to shiver. You know, we call it the umbles. They're stumbling and mumbling. Right. What we can do is wrap this person up with a, a pad and a sleeping bag. We sort of make a burrito and protect them from the elements. And essentially what we're trying to do is trap in their own body heat so that they can shiver themselves back So wet back clothes warm. come off first. Right? All the wet clothes All the wet come clothes off. Come we got to get them dry. And then we want them to heat themselves. Right. And if there's yeah. another person here, they're making things to warm the person yep, as well. Yep, they could be setting up a shelter, making hot drinks, and, and sort of helping uh, with All that right. situation. What if you're on your own? You're on a day hike and you get a, you get soaked. People don't realize after yep. you get soaked, the temperature drops 30 degrees. Well, um, the best thing to do is if you have the energy is to keep moving because your own metabolism creates a lot of body heat. But uh, if if you were hurt and you needed to stop, uh, right. what you could do is essentially get in dry clothes, um, protect yourself from the elements. Um, you could insulate yourself from the ground with some sort of padding. Okay. And if you had uh, if you carry an emergency blanket, you could essentially create one of these just by wrapping the self wrapping this around yourself and uh I would try and get out of the wind. You're wearing yep, a little bit of wind here. This, this is going to protect you from the elements, but it's also going to trap in your own body heat. Um, if you had a candle, you could actually wrap this whole thing around you and sort of seal it off, and carefully, you could warm yourself back up, and eventually you would shiver yourself back to warm. And that is an essential piece of equipment on a day hike. Uh, I think this. so. This it's is so a, light, an right? Piece. It's easy to put in your bag. Yep. And uh, it traps in heat and reflects some of your heat back that normally you would radiate outward. So what's the, what's the takeaway here? What do, you, what do you want people to know when they're out on a day hike or even a week-long hike? Don't tolerate getting cold. You really have to stop and fix the problem before it happens. So if you start getting cold, you know you've got a hat in the bag, pull it out, put Absolutely. it on, you know, as soon as you start to get a little chilly. Yeah, it's just you can't tolerate getting cold because once it starts to add up, it's a lot harder to fix. So pre prevention is really the key and basically hike with another person. Let someone know where you're going yep, initially, and, right? And, and then obviously you have to have the right equipment, right. the right clothing. All right. So. All right, awesome. Great. Jamie O'Donnell, ladies and gentlemen, with Knowles. And Pearson, how are you doing down there? Uh, pretty warm. It's pretty, you're pretty warm, aren't you? I mean, it didn't take long to start feeling the heat. No, not at all. Awesome. So, uh, guys, that's what we want you to obviously get into a situation like that where you're not uh, cold, if you get hypothermic, uh, if you get wet out in the cold, you don't realize it. But Stephanie, even when we're standing out in a hurricane uh, for especially three, four hours and it's 80 degrees and humid, you, get, you can get hypothermic Absolutely. even when it's 80 degrees outside and yeah. people don't realize that. So it, it's the fact that the water is taking away your body heat. Yeah, good uh, conductor there. And Jim, it also depends what you have on your feet. A lot of people wear sandals, but boots are a better idea for that type of thing as well. All right, Jim, we certainly appreciate that. The question is, have you ever faced a life or death weather situation? We want you to answer on our Facebook or Twitter page, yes or no, and keep your comments coming so we can share them with others. Mike?